Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And welcome back to Hilal Live. My name is Faraz Patel. We'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Lukman Shadrach, for taking you through that first part of the show. Now, as we speak right now, there's been a four-hour respite. Within that four-hour respite, it's not a ceasefire. It's giving the citizens of Gaza a chance, if you may want to call it that, an opportunity to either go to the north or the south of the enclave. The question is, where do they go to? Because it seems as if there is real nowhere for them to be at. Everywhere they go to, it's been blocked at the moment. The figure is moving close to 11,000, 11,000 lives that have been lost, women, children, men. And that's beside, of course, what is happening in the West Bank, Jenin, and other parts of Palestine. The word ceasefire has been mentioned by millions and millions of people as we speak. Within Gaza, journalists are putting their lives on the line, bringing you stories. You get the parts, of course, that are covered by Western media, and of course the parts that are covered from journalists on the ground who are bringing you through courtesy of various social media platforms, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the TikToks. And you, of course, as the citizen of the world, the viewer, you make what you want, which part of it you would like to watch. One journalist, of course, who was part of many of the wars that had happened in Gaza, but she is now, of course, moved to Turkey, is Isra Al Mudalal, and she joins me now via Zoom. Isra, Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and Jazakla so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Isra, let's talk about from a humanitarian perspective, and as a Muslim, I could understand and we feel what is happening in Gaza, but as somebody who is from the city, who experienced all the wars, your story goes deeper than what is happening. Talk to us yeah. about that. Before 75 years, mm. we were living in our land, Palestine. From the river to the sea, mm. it was Palestine. After the 1948, the Israeli Zionist mm. then claimed that this is their land, so they just uh, did this uh, like trips of immigration mm. one to the other until they occupied the land. The way they occupied the land, it is the same way now they are firing, attacking, throw the, their military airstrikes, bombing above the people heads until they um, made them like just um, evacuated from their own homes to the other parts of Gaza, and in the same time, with a collective punishment, suiciding people, um, killing them, you know, with, 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 with the horrible ways of illegal, immoral killing. Like, um, I, I can describe it as mm. it's like um, Nazi, yani. mm. all right? So the, the point is now, they are doing the same thing in 2023 on Gaza Strip, the same way, the same policy, the same suicide, the same uh, killing. Now Gaza Strip is under siege for 17 years, 17 years under siege. So all of all over the like Gaza, there is a siege. So we cannot even cross to other country, we cannot move, we cannot import, export, we cannot have a medical treatment health care, we cannot have our own economy. So after 75 years, there, there is always wars on Gaza. Gaza. We are witnessing, we witnessed five wars before this war. And by the way, this is not a normal war. This is genocide war. It's against the children. It's the killing children. So they are doing the same thing, the same thing they did 75 years ago. Now we're witnessing a very horrible, very hard situation, crisis, a humanitarian crisis, because this time they cut the electricity totally, the internet, the water, 
Um, there's no bread, there's no food. They are bombing the hospitals. They are attacking the churches and the mosques and all the citizen. This, this war is against citizen people and innocent people. So we are talking about like more than 10,000 were murdered from the Palestinian. We're talking about more than 5,000 child were killed from the Israeli occupation airstrikes. We're talking about more than 56 mosques destroyed totally, more than seven churches. And we are talking about um, around 45 journalists also were killed by the Israeli. Uh, the situation is very hard and very horrible. Uh, we cannot describe it. We are calling the uh, the, commu the communities, the other uh, international communities, the uh, NGOs, the United Nations, the Red Cross, to to call for a ceasefire. But until this moment, everyone, like most of the governments in the world, are supporting the war on Gaza uh, because they claim that it it might stop Hamas firing mm. back or defending themselves or, or um, uh, like uh, control Gaza Strip. But this is not happening because, the, as I, I said, that they are killing the civilian and the children in Gaza. It's not mm. a war against Hamas. Isra, the word ceasefire and many governments, I mean, just yesterday, the Belgium government, there's a consideration because they themselves are calling for that potential ceasefire. And the, especially here in South Africa, when you heard governments take that there has to be a ceasefire. This is the South African government. Why is it taking so long? And, and, and talk to us uh, the frustration because the ceasefire was called two weeks ago in the General Assembly. And I would like to think if the ceasefire had been adhered to two weeks ago, many lives would have been saved. Talk to us about that frustration because more lives have been lost now in two weeks than ever before. The importance of that ceasefire, because many people don't understand just how much lives not only can it save, but from a humanitarian aid perspective, the human rights that every citizen deserves in this world can be given to those people, the people of Gaza, that deserve it just by having that ceasefire? Actually, the media played a very dirty role mm. in this because they completely uh, raised up the Israeli narrative, which is mm. totally fake, totally fake. And we did not witness, we did not have one evidence of any of uh, the head scout of the Israeli children or women or blah, 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 blah. Haaretz itself, the Israeli newspaper, uh, published 400 names of, of in Israeli soldiers who were killed after uh, in the day of 7 October from Hamas uh, fighters. So, so the, the media uh, actually made the, the, the public uh, opinion and people and also politicians to go through the, the decision of the war in Gaza. They supported totally the war on Gaza and they didn't allow the Palestinian narrative to, to be even or appear in the media. So they were only one narrative, one picture, one call, and all of the pictures you saw from the Israeli mm. side is not true at all. Not true at all. Even they said that, oh, we don't uh, attack hospitals. Just yesterday and today, they attacked one of, mm. one of the most important hospitals, which is only for children, and Denise Hospital. It's only specific for children. And the other hospital for uh, 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 physical uh, treatment uh, people were destroyed. Uh, for eyes, uh, health treatment were destroyed and attacked. So until this now, we are witnessing a huge uh, massacres right now happening uh, in these hospitals. We are talking about eight hospitals right now. So these pictures, these people who were under fire and shooting from 
all all of the Israeli um, uh, ways of, of airstrikes, uh, actually, it wasn't seen in the media. And everyone from the politicians or the government speak about the Palestinian side and how it's important to save Palestinian soul and, pe and people. They're immediately um, like, uh, um, uh, let us say, attacked by the other media that they are against Jewish, they are with the terrorists, and and this kind of of uh, attacks. So hateness is speeches. So the the point is that the 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 West is responsible, like America, who played uh, a, a very important role in in all of uh, the war. Uh, in, like a crisis because we are like they they kill the Palestinian people from the American weapon and from the uh, from the, uh, the support of the Europe. So now they are talking about ceasefire because now they just recognize the lies of the Israeli government that they claim that they are destroying Hamas fighters and they want to uh, save their uh, people uh, life so 7 October w won't happen again. But did we see that? No. So now they started to, to, put, to recognize that who is the, the one who based this war are the Palestinian children and women. After that, they, they don't want to support Israel anymore. After the break, I continue. But it's too late, you know, after thousands of people who are killed now. And until this moment, I'm talking to you and most of the people I know, journalists are going and evacuated from Gaza City to the north uh, areas by walking, you know, because there is no cars, no fuel, uh, no way to, Isra to, to, to like... Safe it, to, to uh, make them ahead to the other areas. Isra, we have to take a break. We will continue this conversation after the break. I'm talking to Isra Al Madalal. She is, of course, a Gaza, a Palestinian journalist who is living in Turkey. To stay tuned. Welcome back to Hilal Live. I'm still in conversation with Isra El Mudalal. She's a Palestinian journalist currently living in Turkey. Isra, you've, as you've mentioned, you've covered three wars on Gaza. And the reporting would be completely different to, of course, what the mainstream media would go ahead and do it. I've looked at the likes of Plastia Alakat, Murtaza Aziza. The list goes on of the journalists that are uh, uh, risking their lives, the, uh, the likes of Hin Kudari, who are on the ground, giving us the news from social media perspective, of course, because they themselves don't have the means of mainstream. Talk to us about what it is to be on the ground, knowing that whatever story you file could potentially be your last that you could ever give to the public out there? Yeah, it's a, it's very hard actually to feel that you're under attack and no no safe place to go and no any um, uh, protection for the journalist. And no one even would recognize you from the institutions, organizations, uh, journalist rights uh, of defend and protection. So you're alone, but you're doing that for your country, for your people, for the right for the truth. So all of these journalists risk their own lives to be on the ground. What, what matter happened? What, ma what matter happened because they are the only scene and picture for the truth. They are the only narrative that can be abroad shown uh, to, to the people so they can make them feel what's going on, go for more, more uh, uh, demonstrations, put more pressure on the government's decisions and the decision makers to stop the war on Gaza and ceasefire on Gaza. So this is why it's very important to have these journalists on the ground. But in the same time, they know that they could 
be killed any moment because the journalists are the first Israeli ghouls to, to make rid of them, to, to kill them, so they won't be any picture. And this is what we witnessed. We witnessed 55 journalists were killed, and not just them, the other journalists who were targeted by their own family. So they could stop us to continue fighting, to continue uh, uh, showing the truth to the world by targeting our families as journalists. And this is what happened with Ali Jadallah and with Muhammad Al-Alul, Al -Al sorry, and with Wa'il Dahdouh. These people, their families were killed, totally destroyed, their houses attacked. And if, and if the families were not killed, their houses were destroyed. So there's no way to go. The, the journalists now are working, not hard, working in the most, most crisis situation in the world with no protection, with no water, with no clean water, with no bread, no food, no internet, no connection. They are running in the streets behind the bombing areas, destroyed areas. They are now trying to do same as the uh, aids and the ambulance and the uh, people who are, who are saving people uh, lives now uh, because they are carrying the, the people, the injuries. The, the 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 bodies they are trying to make their cars as ambulance cars instead of they are doing like multi things they are taking the children who survived to 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 uh, to, to to make them feel better uh, you know and to take them to a safer place so they are doing so many things not just a journalist as as a human being also they are of course, taking the responsibility of other people's lives. But they are working in a very dangerous situation because, as I told you, it's not a normal war. Israeli is attacking whole areas. And Gaza, by the way, it's a very small area, 360 kilometers with 2 million people inside. And people are building their houses in, uh, next to other uh, uh, buildings and houses. So all the houses are next to each other. Uh, and we have eight camps. It's the most population in the world. In one kilometer, uh, there is thousands of people who's living. And we are extended families who are living in the same building. So there's so many children. So Israeli, this time, policy is to burn the whole area, to burn the, the connections. And they are targeting even the bread, uh, um, like shops and the supermarkets and the water uh, centers, everything. So, so there is nowhere to go. So the only picture we can see inside Gaza is to throw these journalists who are using their social media pages to send us the picture. And in the same time, what is happening Actually, the Meta uh, Institute and the uh, Instagram, Facebook, mm. they are blocking our content. They are uh, uh, making our content not seen to, to unfollowers, people. And they are in every single picture we post, the, you will post, they consider it as a dangerous content. And they, they are uh, threatening us by deleting and, and, and deleting our Beiges. So we are fighting to say the truth, even because if you're standing with Palestine, you're a terrorist. If you're uh, calling for the rights of Palestine to live, to protect, uh, to peace, live, you're a terrorist. This is how is the West is uh, like um, making their propaganda so, so other people cannot stand with Palestine and they don't know the truth. And this is what Hitler did, actually. Um, uh, 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 one of his policies was called the siege of, of, of the Iran. So you cannot see less one picture, one video, one narrative, one call, one voice. And this is what the, the media now is trying to do. Because they, they don't uh, uh, want wants the people to see how is the Israeli are the terrorists. The Israeli is the ISIS by the horrible way of killing people. It's like collective punishment. It's on everyone. 
they're using phosphor, white phosphor. You know what it's doing? It's burning the children bodies. 70%, 8% of the phosphor uh, uh, result is burning the bodies, houses, grasses, and natural uh, food, vegetable, everything. So this is why, and actually it was since 2009, they started to, uh, to fire against us with the phosphor, uh, white phosphor. And this is why we have so many women with cancer diseases and so many children with cancer diseases until this moment because they have used it before. And, and this Holocaust in Gaza, it's since 2009, the first war in Gaza. But now this just the world realizes it because of the social media and because that we, we have witnesses on that and we are documenting uh, the the massacres happening Isra, in Gaza. Isra, I have to bring in this important question. And of course, we've just got a little time. So this is a very important one. As a Gazan, as a Palestinian, you're seeing around the world protests that are happening. I don't think I've ever seen a change in narrative the way I'm seeing it now. The amount of people that have turned to become pro-Palestinian, who are understanding what is actually happening on the ground, who understand yeah. what is going on. Do you feel that could be the turning point in the way the citizens of the world potentially view this? Because ignorance is there for a lot of people. But it needs certain things, like the journalists that are sitting in Gaza, to change that ignorance into awareness. Do you feel that this turning of the tide happening now can bring about the positivity, even if it's very small, to change what is yeah. happening at this moment? It's not just the changing what yeah. is happening and calling for ceasefire. It's just, it's also very important to say that Israeli given a very good answer, the truth answer, by its genociding in Gaza, by telling the people we stole the land, and they did the same thing in 1948. So thank you, Israeli occupation, for letting the world know the truth of you, the truth of taking the land before 75 years by, by the same policy, ethnic cleansing, genociding. So this is very important that people now are aware of the Palestinian issue, the refugee issue, the Quds issue, and, and, and the siege on Gaza 17 years ago, and the world didn't know anything about it. So yes, people now are aware of the occupation, the settlements, illegal settlements in Gaza. And by the way, the 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 Jewish in in, in Israel, and let me let me tell you that there is so many differences between the religious of the Jewish mm. as a religion and the Zionists in Israel claiming that they are Jewish. They are not Jewish. They don't know God. They don't belong to any religion. They belong to the criminals and death and blood religion. And it's, it's not a religion. Of course, not, no religion is calling for death and killing civilians. But they're, they're claiming that it's written in Torah that kill a Palestinian, and this is what Hakam said, not me, mm. kill a Palestinian so you'll be blessed. And they give weapons to their children. They're calling the children, they impose the children, and they're raising up the people to kill the Palestinian, to get rid of Palestinian until the last Palestinian civilian in Gaza Strip in, uh, in Palestine. So the hateness, the racism, and the policy of ethnic cleansing is the one who is leading Israeli inside to get to take uh, the land and to make it full of Jewish people, not not one Christian, not one Muslim. So when the the people in the who's also leading demonstrations and people calling for the Palestinian right of return now is aware of the truth of the Zionist the truth of the Israeli occupation, that it, 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 it didn't come by democracy, elected uh, uh, operation, no, no, no. It's, it's, not democ it's not like Biden said. So it cannot be this country 
the state, the Israel occupation, who are killing now the children. It, it cannot be. And it do not, not deserve to be supported. And even uh, some people were defending that we, we are also wants Israel to live in peace. Now these voices are not exist anymore because they cannot, these people are the one who are calling for peace. They're destroying Gaza Strip, the whole Strip, killing millions of people. They cannot be the same country who are uh, 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 pretending to be democracy in the in the Middle East, using weapons, illegal weapons, immoral weapons, weapons that it's even uh, where where in the law say that it it's it's a crime to use it. It's a crime to use these weapons in the war. They're using it above a people's heads in Gaza. Isra, I 70 have to... percent of people in Gaza are refugees mm. from the pa Palestinian territory occupied land, 48 lands. My family were one of them. We we have uh, more than uh, 278 with, uh, destroyed, attacked by the Israeli occupation. These schools were, were destroyed and attacked, uh, full of people who evacuated from their homes. And Israel told us that go to these places because it's safe. We won't bomb it. After people listened to the lies of Israeli military and went to these schools as its shuttle, okay, as it's a safe place, they bombed the people. They killed the people inside of Isra, these schools. Isra, I have to stop you there. Unfortunately, time is against us, and I wish we had more. And inshallah, we will bring you back on your on Hilal life. We'd like to say. Shukran to you for making the time for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That's Isra Al Mudalal. She's a Palestinian journalist based in Turkey. After the break, I'll have your latest in news. To stay tuned.